Welcome to the Databricks Skill Builder Series. We're glad you're here. David Radford is here to share with us his computer vision pipeline for detecting damage to solar panels. David has been with Databricks for three and a half years. He is a senior solutions architect in the energy vertical at Databricks. Hey everybody, coming to you today with some computer vision artifacts here. Didn't see a whole lot out there, uh, especially in the annotation space for computer vision and just kind of a out of the box thing that we can do to show from end to end how computer vision works. So I wanted to put something together for everybody. This will be a first part for people that just kind of want to get to the details and see the outcome. Uh, and then we'll kind of dive into a little bit more of like how the sausage is essentially made. In computer vision, there's there's a few main components that you want to do. One is a segmentation style of computer vision, which means we're going to essentially like cut out pieces of the image or very finely identify the portion of that image that hosts our component that we're looking for. There's object detection, which is a little bit looser. We just want to um, detect in that image kind of approximately where something is at via a bounding box. Uh, then there's you know, classification. Is this image a picture of a zebra or not a zebra, right? And then there's uh, also a host of other ones, you know, pose being one of those two. Um, but the three main ones, uh, we're going to focus on segmentation and classification today as our use case. A lot of companies out there don't really want to upload their sensitive data to other annotation tools, or they want their annotation tools to integrate really well with their data estate, like on Databricks. I uh, put together a very small application here that's rudimentary, but gets the job done for annotation that doesn't require you to go outside of Databricks. Uh, so this is actually a Databricks app that's deployed using Flask. Um, there's two different modes. There's segmentation and damage. We'll dive into segmentation first. So this is essentially pulling imagery off of Delta tables in binary format, loading them up for us and allowing us to place polygons over top of them. Uh, so you'll see this is an image of a solar panel through a drone that has flown with a heat style uh, camera on it. So we can annotate these, you know, just put some uh, polygon dots around it. We can kind of continue to do this. And this is the first phase of our computer vision program is just identifying solar panels, right? So we can save that annotation off. This will save to the Delta table as well. So everything's kind of integrated, both the retrieval and the saving of this so that it can integrate into our computer vision pipeline. Moving on outside of our segmentation, piece is damage. So this is more classification style. We need to annotate which panels are damaged. This might be someone that's a little bit more subject matter expert in the space to be able to tell folks, um, you know, this is actually damaged. This one's damaged. This one's damaged. Nothing else is great. That makes it really lightweight for them. Their specialty is identifying damage on these. They don't need to bounding box and, and spend a lot of time around that. We can clean that up in the back end by doing some polygon contains. So that's the annotation portion. Like I said, it's very lightweight, rudimentary, it gets the job done enough to get us able to train computer vision models. So kind of the architecture here without getting into the details yet, we'll kind of back into those a little bit later. Our segmentation model we train based on that first annotation that we were doing, drawing polygons around each one of our solar panels. Um, and the output of that deployed model with images put through it for inference looks something like this. We get polygons drawn around each individual solar panel. This model is very good at just identifying panels in general. It doesn't know anything about damage yet. Um, we're going to train a separate model for classification of each one of those polygons, um, which is down here. That classification model will take in those polygons, look at each individual polygon worth of this image. So it's going to focus in on just that area and look at if it's damaged or not. And the classification model is very fine tuned on just simply doing that, looking for damage. And we end up with a nice um, kind of output that looks something like this, right? This is what we're after essentially is images that have damage in them for now. And that's what this will give us. We get to split it into two separate models that are very good at doing their specific task. One being segmentation to identify panels and the second one to do classification of those panels if they're damaged or not. You could then continue to iterate on this, put more models in here or tune this classification model to be able to classify cracks, debris, um, bullets, whatever that you need to classify each individual damage component as. All right, so that's kind of the end of the high level what you'd want to see kind of happy path. If we dive in now on the more technical side of the house, um, we'll kind of scroll to the left here. This is kind of how the sausage is made and how we start this process. And we start with a, you know, a, a bunch of JPEG images or PNG images or TIFF that depends on what your you know data source is and how, how rich it is with other metadata around it. Uh, these were just JPEGs that we're using. It's a open source Kaggle data sets. They were already pre-annotated. 
But again, I mean, this is a data set that's out there for anyone to use. If you have a proprietary data set, it's not going to be annotated yet. You're going to have to annotate it yourself, which is what that Databricks app is, is good at getting us to. So Databricks app, you know, for all intents and purposes, provided us, you know, annotations like this. And then we kind of continue on with the story here. We load um, our JPEG images as binary into a Delta table. You know, we're just doing like a bronze thermal image table, uh, load our annotations as well as JSON data types or struct data types into a Delta table as well. From there, because we're doing instance segmentation, so each individual panel is its own instance of that panel, um, we're going to create masks based on these and each mask is going to get its own ID, right? So essentially what you do is you start with a blank slate of all zero. Right, so your um, your canvas is all zeros, and then you start to mask over it. So each panel that comes in here, this is a list of panels. Um, the first one is one, and you fill in that little box of polygons with one, and then the next instance is two, and so on and so forth, until you uh, reach the end of your list. Um, so your mask now is complete with um, each individual panel on that mask canvas. Um, and you don't necessarily need the thermal image for that at all. You just need to make sure that the masks are the same size as the thermal image. And then we take both of those, join them together, and then perform augmentation on them, right? So now we can take a very small data set and that's hopefully pretty representative of everything that we might see. Maybe it's not, that's okay, you gotta start somewhere. Take that small number of images and now you can blow that up by using uh, augmentations. Uh, in this particular case, we use albumentations. You can do rotates and crops and blurs and color contrasts and all kinds of um, cool stuff to get from one image to 12 in this case. Uh, and we save that off as our training data. And this is what you'll kind of see, you know, the flipped images, the flipped masks, and you got to apply the same augmentation to both things. And then you'll kind of see here on the mask, you know, they kind of shade in. That's that's doing the zero to, to one, to two, to three. Each panel is its own ID. And then you can take these, train your segmentation model, um, and then, you know, the rest off to the right we've already talked about. Um, and then for classification, we can take the same original images, cut out each individual panel using our annotations, and, and prepare a classification training data set as well. Uh, the reason I kind of did this was... Uh, each each image might only have one damage panel, it might have none. And so you get a really hard time balancing this training data set. It's very hard to pick out things. And again, we want models that are very specific at their their actual job rather than trying to like make one model do it all. So that was very nice to be able to make this model uh, train on just essentially defect, no defect, classification, binary classification here. And we could rebalance the data set too, so we weren't over skewed on no defects. Uh, and then the rest is kind of history. You know, we train that classification model, input polygons from a segmentation model, and there you go. That's that's what we get. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it.